Hello everyone. In this video, we will introduce object-oriented programming in C++. Object-oriented programming is the main feature that distinguishes C++ from simple C. Objects are collections of data that belong together. They can also have functions to act on that data. Generally, objects in C++ can be a class or a struct which stands for structure. A vector integer, for example, uh, or a string are examples of a class, but we can write our own as well. Now, let's suppose how to... Let's discuss how to group data. And uh, let's suppose we have a record of data for each person. For example, a record for each student. We have a string that includes the name of the student, uh, an integer that's the birth year, an integer that's the birth month, and an integer that's the birth day, and a string that uh, contains the student's address. Having all these separate variables is unwieldy if we want to do anything with a whole set of data. We would need a function with arguments for each variable and we would have to change these if we want to extend the set of data. So that's an example of the kind of function we would need. As you can see, uh, this would be not very practical, this would be hard to use. To solve this problem, we are going to define a new type of variable. This will allow us to group data together. So we declare a struct or a structure and uh, we call it student. And to define it, we use curly braces as we did for declaring functions uh, or defining functions. And inside that struct, we have a string uh, that we call name an integer that's the birth year, and so on. The variables I just mentioned before. And we do that before our main function. So, as for other functions, this code goes outside the main function, uh, but it has to be at least defined before the main function, uh, if we want to use it. And uh, remember that there's a semicolon at the end, right here. Now here's another slightly shorter example. Uh, we could have a variable type uh, that we can call point that can represent a point in 3D space. So we declare a structure and call it point and it consists of a double uh, number x, another double y, and another double z. Obviously, this describes uh, the Cartesian coordinates of that point. Once we have defined the new type of variable, the point, we can declare objects of this type. And we can also use the dot operator to refer to and change individual pieces of data. So here inside the main function, I can declare a point P1 and a point P2. And if I want to modify some of the data inside those structures, I can access that data using the dot operator. So for example, p1.x will modify the x component uh, of the point p1 and we can set p1.x equal to 2 for example so we know that the, the first or the x component of the point p1 is going to be 2 similarly we can change for example the z component of the point p2 and set it equal to 4.5 Now, the variable types that we define, such as a point, can be passed to functions as arguments. 
the way it's done is similar to how we passed a vector or a string to a function. So here, after we've defined this structure point, we can uh, declare a function that could be a void function, doesn't return anything, but it prints something to the screen. And uh, we can call it output. And the argument could be a point. And uh, here we can use an ampersand to pass by reference. And if you remember, if you go back to the video we'll, where we describe uh, references in C++, that means we're passing the memory location uh, of that object instead of the object itself. So uh, that's more efficient. Um, in, in particular, this function uh, is doing a Cout. So it's printing the components uh, x y and z of the point p to the screen and in this case they're separated by a space uh, we can also include a tab character then they would be separated by a tab um, again these are printed to the screen they're not returned um, so there's nothing that this function returns there's no return command in the end so uh, the type of this function is void since it doesn't return anything. And uh, after that, we can define or declare point P and then modify its components. For example, P dot X equals two. And similarly, we can modify uh, the Y and Z components. And then if we call this function output uh, with argument P, then this is simply going to print the components uh, of that function or of that point uh, to the screen. So we just call it as a normal function and pass P as our argument. Now let's talk about member functions. A structure can have its own functions. These are called member functions. For example, the output function that we just defined can be changed into a member function. To do that, we would just move that function definition and declaration inside the structure. Now, in general, we need to declare the function when we define the structure, but the code for the body of the function can come later. This is similar to the way we deal with ordinary functions. But with member functions, we need a way of specifying that the function code belongs to that object type. And this is done using two columns like this. So here, for example, I have a structure point and I declare uh, this void output function inside that structure, but I want to define that function later. So to do that, I can first access the object point um, by using these semicolons and then um, access the output function inside that point. So that specifies that this output function is inside that object point. And this is what we are defining here. Now, one question is how to initialize data members. The preceding examples initialized data members, uh, X, Y, and Z, for example, uh, in the main function. There are other ways to initialize these variables. A constructor is a special member function to set up the data. The constructor is a function which is called when we declare a variable. Now, here's how to use a constructor to set default values for member variables. Now, the constructor is a member function with the same name as the variable name. 
in this case the variable name is point so the constructor name is point uh, this function does not need a return type it doesn't return a value the this example gives default values to the member data and the default values are zero so uh, if I call a point or if I declare a point and doesn't specify the data then by default the X Y and Z components will have values zero we can also have a constructor that accepts arguments so we may want to use that to pass values as function arguments when we declare a point so we do that by again treating point as a function which will have a constant double x0 and a double y0 and a double z0 as arguments and then we use a colon to initialize the, at the point uh, using those values x0 y0 and z0 we can also use both constructors together a variable type can have both kinds of constructor just as with a vector there are multiple ways to initialize it so here if I call a point without arguments it's gonna initialize them to zero but if I call a point and uh, use some arguments then it's going to initialize that point with the arguments that I specify so here's what happens when we call that data type and uh, declare an object of that type we can declare point P for example without any arguments or we can declare a point Q and specify the arguments and then we can call remember we have this output function uh, that we declared earlier this one right here uh, so if we keep this piece of code then we can use p.output to print the components of the point on the screen so now if I type p.output and q.output uh, I'm going to print out those points so for p dot output we will get 0 0 0 and for q dot output we will get 2 3.5 and 4.5 and again we for p we haven't uh, declared any arguments so by default the values will be 0 because they were initialized using this constructor right here and finally we can also have destructors so a constructor sets up an object of a particular type uh, but objects can also have a destructor this is a function that is called when the object goes out of scope so it's not used anymore for example we can do that using the tilde sign so we can use tilde point uh, and then the same code as before um, as an example we can think of the string or vector objects which allocate a block of memory now these objects need to deallocate the memory uh, or that block uh, of memory when they're finished so they have a destructor to do this but since we make use of the string or vector um, we don't have to allocate and deallocate that memory ourselves it's handled automatically uh, by these objects string and vector that are already defined in C++ uh, so we will not need to cover destructors in this module that's it for this video thank you for watching